Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today is Saturday, September 5th, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So the weekend update uh, was dropped by Eagle Dynamics yesterday, and it looks like this one talks about the A10C2 preparation. We're doing our best to meet your highest expectations and intensive internal and external beta testing is underway. Currently, we're working on improvements to new weaponry. APKWS, laser-guided mavericks and bombs. We're also working hard on all current bugs with scheduled fixes coming in further updates. So this is the new and improved A10C2 update that they're coming out with. And I believe they had mentioned that there will be some sort of upgrade path for owners of the A10. So uh, we're going to see how that goes, I guess. Next up, MiG-21 development update. More importantly, a long-awaited update to the cockpit mesh was finalized, which substantially improved the precision of cockpit geometry. This will be particularly appreciated by VR users. Visual improvements were followed by a new flight model, as well as avionics and weapon system enhancements, such as recalibration of all the instruments. Significant ground clutter causes performance degradation, when the RP-22 SMA radar is used in low-level flight. This has yet to be resolved. Small corrections to the lift coefficient at lower Mach numbers were made. Structural damage caused by exceeded G-load limits is now dynamically calculated depending on aircraft weight. So the one bug that they speak of really pissed me off like a week ago because they had just released those new missions for the Syria map and I jumped in the MiG-21 to try them out and it was like it was like somebody put the brakes on man I didn't even realize the radar was on or anything and like the MiG-21 literally went from like a hundred frames per second to eight frames per second to one frame per second it's a really, really shitty bug, and I hope they definitely get that fixed, because who's going to fly the MiG like that? Who can fly the MiG like that, really? Uh, the addition of navigation data for DCS Syria has been added, as well as a number of new missions. An overhaul of almost all air-to-air -air missiles is also in progress. We are experimenting with a more realistic rendering technology for the ASP gun sight and RP-22 SMA radar. Uh, Magnitude 3 has expanded the Leatherneck simulation team who are now working on DCS, MiG-21 Biz, and two other projects. And there's a couple of nice screenshots of it. But again, like I said, I tried to fly the MiG again for the first time in a long time, and it was literally a slideshow. And this is outside of VR. Whatever that bug is that they're talking about that needs to be resolved, definitely needs to be resolved. And uh, lastly, they're talking about the MI-8 MTV-2 Crew Part 1. This was released a couple weeks ago, I think, whenever they came out with the Syria map, or it was advertised at the same time. One of the two, but it's definitely been available uh, prior to today and yesterday when they released this news bit. Uh, it says, a new campaign from Stone Sky is available for the DCS MI-8 MTV-2 Magnificent 8. Set in the extremes of North Russia, this campaign will test your skills at all stages of flight. Um, it looks pretty cool. I seen Sergio did a write-up on it over at the Hella Simmer as well, and I uh, threw a link to it where you can get it. So if you have the MI-8 and you're looking for something different to do with Big Bertha, uh, this may be just what you're looking for. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, so we spoke the other day about the 3000 series from NVIDIA that is being released on, I believe, the 17th and the 24th, 
the 3080 comes out on the 17th, the 3090 comes out on the 24th. Uh, somebody was also correcting me and said that the 3090 is going to be $1,500, not $1,400. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I saw a bunch of different places that quoted it at $1,400. So what's $100 at that point, right? So... I just wanted to throw that out there. Somebody had corrected me in the uh, show notes uh, last time in the uh, comments section there. So anyways, uh, there, there's this pretty cool, I guess, list of questions and answers summary. Um, and it's on the NVIDIA Reddit. And it talks about a lot of the different things, uh, like why only 10 gigabytes of memory for the RTX 3080? Uh, there was something talking about DLSS and VR, and uh, that sounds pretty promising. Here it is. What kind of advancements can we expect from DLSS? Most people are expecting 3.0, or at very least, DLSS 2.1. And uh, one of the things they mentioned is DLSS SDK 2.1 is out and includes three updates. Ultra Performance Mode for 8K Gaming. 8K? Holy crap! <laughs> Where are you going to get something that's going to support 8K? So, my day job is an integrator, and uh, we put together really high-end uh, homes for professional athletes and people that have more money than God most days. And uh, even when it comes to like 8K TVs and stuff like that that we've installed for people, there's really not a lot of stuff out there that supports 8K properly. And there's not a lot of stuff out there that can handle the bandwidth of 8K. So I find it really funny that like in the PC realm when they talk about 8K in PC gaming, like I can only imagine what an 8K monitor would cost. Um, and how many cables you would need to, you know, push that kind of bandwidth. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, not to go too far off topic, it's whenever I see people talk about 8K, I just shake my head because, you know, th there's not a lot of 4K stuff out there that's true 4K these days, and we don't have the bandwidth to push that, you know, in most homes, yet alone in PC stuff in general. There are special cables that are required to get the full bandwidth of 4K even. So, But anyways, back to the important part, VR support. So it says DLSS is now supported for VR titles. Now, the title has to support DLSS, I would imagine, first. So this would be promising if we can get, you know, Eagle Dynamics to get, you know, DCS to ever... Uh, utilize something like this. But again, I think the bigger issue is is it's not something that's just that simple. You know, I, I think we're at least a year or more, I would say maybe even two years away from getting that overhaul of the core engine that they've been speaking of. But they have talked about it a few times. They've mentioned that it's in the works. So I'm hoping that I'm very off in my estimate because I would love to see something like that sooner. But there's a lot of great information in here on the 30 series stuff, and that was the one thing that stood out most to me that I thought might be interesting and help us with uh, DCS and flight sims in VR in general. So if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the 3080 series, I'll throw a link to this in the video description so you can check this out for yourself. So next up is probably the most exciting news of the week if you happen to own the Syria campaign and you happen to have an F-15, F-16, F-18, F-14, MiG-21, MiG-29. <laughs> I know, that's a whole lot. So these missions are created by Kaba, and I almost want to say that sure sounds like the name of the guy that created the Cage the Bear campaign for the uh, F-14 Tomcat. Uh, if it is, that dude is really good, and the uh, missions that I've flown in Cage the Bear were freaking awesome. Um, but anyway, I downloaded these. I just checked out one of the missions so far, and it was pretty cool. In, in the uh, beginning of the mission, I could jump in a Tomcat, a Hornet, uh, a Viper, and... Uh, damn, what was the other one? Oh, an Eagle, if I wanted to. So I don't know that all of the missions are designed that way, but it's a four-mission pack 
and uh, I've read nothing but good things about this. That's why I happened upon it. I think, I want to say that um, the Stormbirds were talking about this. So I went and grabbed it, and uh, I'm going to throw this in the video description as usual so you could check it out for yourself. But if you own any of those aircraft, you should definitely check this out alongside the Syria map. Very cool stuff. And it's rare that you get free missions that are this nice. And like I said, the one I started to fly was really cool. All right. So the September 3rd, 2020 development update for Flight Simulator. So the big patch was released the other day. And man, I'll tell you what, it was not an easy process. I, I don't know what happened. It really was fucking me around, man. <laughs> Uh, it, it told me that I needed to go to the store and start the update. And then within the game, it came up and started to do an update. And I swear somebody said it was something ridiculous, like 70 or 80 gigabytes. But then after screwing me around and giving me an error on the store page, I got back in the game and it did an update that went rather fast. And then I jumped right in, and I was able to, I was able to start flying again. So I don't know, um, but it was really kind of a bummer because I was like, oh, I can't do nothing until I use this update. It's a you know mandatory update. So yeah, it's just one of them things that's a little irritating, and it really didn't go as smooth, I don't think, as they thought. But this is a really big list of the development update. I'm not going to go in here and read it all. But um, some of the things that stood out to me are that there's a patch 2 that is in the works right now. Um, there's a development roadmap here as well that talks about, you know, September 3rd, update. September 10th, Around the World Episode 3, Partnership Series Release, SDK and Third Party Update, Feedback Snapshot. September 7th, Around the World, Episode 4. Uh, another update. September 24th is another actual download update, supposedly. And you go on and on and on, and it goes into October, what they're you know tentatively talking about for October, what they're tentatively talking about for November. So I'll give them credit. It's very nice that they're putting dates out there and you know trying to be transparent and give us an idea of where this development is going. And then it goes on to talk about the SDK update. And uh, then it says, you know, recent product highlights. The most prop popular aircraft is the TBM 930, number one. The Cessna Citation is number th two. The Airbus is number three. And then, let's see, the longest flight, 10.39 uh, hours. Uh, there's On Twitch, there's been 6,571,313 hours watched. Uh, most popular destination is your house. Haha, <laughs> that's interesting. And there's been, what is this? A billion, one hundred and eighty-one million, five hundred and sixty-eight thousand, five hundred and fifty-four total miles flown. So it's a bunch of really interesting facts here, which is pretty cool. Then there's a video that goes to talk about all the accolades that they've gotten so far. Here's their Twitch channel. Uh, some amazing screenshots from the community etc 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 I'm enjoying Microsoft Flight Simulator there's a lot of very cool things about it um, I want an aircraft that has a better G tolerance so I, I'm used to flying the jets in DCS I would like something that you know I can't break as easily I guess is where I'm at so I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Here's a video that I happened to find that I thought was interesting, and this is one of those dudes that like spells his name out in a weird way. So it's four R C H. It's it's architect basically, you know. Like this is so I don't know. Two thousand and one <laughs> on the internet, if you ask me, but. I like the video because it was a, hey, what's shooting at me? Quick and dirty DCS. Oh, quick and dirty DCS. Have you ever wondered who the heck is shooting at me? Well, let's find out. You will usually know by looking at your RWR or radar warning receiver. There's four main symbols to help you identify threats. 
So this is only about three minutes long, and I found it amusing. I like the guy's style and approach. Uh, he has a very good speaking voice. And, uh, you know, if you're a beginner at DCS and you don't know a lot about the RWR, this isn't a bad primer. So I'm going to throw this up there and uh, you can check it out for yourself. All right, next up is the ever so popular Casmo. So Casmo has been doing all these awesome helicopter videos. And this is a little different for him. It's somewhat of a departure, but he does a really good job of this. So he's created his own joystick extension for his Thrustmaster 16000M. Hey guys, Casmo here. And today we're going to do something a little bit different than normal. I'm going to walk you through some crafting that I did recently. Um, I'm pretty proud of it because it came out really well. And everything was looking good. So I just put it all together to see what it looked like. And this is what we had. So I thought this was a pretty good look. Uh, it's pretty clean. Um, just two problems I had with it. One, it was just too tall. Um, I sat down in my chair, kind of wiggled around, and I wanted to be able to hold my... So this is about eight minutes long. It's not a super long video, but it is very well done. And uh, he goes into detail and tells you everything he did. And uh, I think if you're interested in doing something like this to a Thrustmaster T16000M, that uh, this might be worth looking into. And uh, especially if you're into flying helicopters in uh, DCS, uh, he also said it worked rather well in Flying Circus and uh, IL-2 and some other titles. So uh, it might be something worth checking out. I will throw a link to this in the video description as usual. So next up, Verpal Controls uh, have released their VPC Control Panel 1. Boy, it sure looks just like that throttle without the throttle, doesn't it? So. I have no idea what these things cost, but oh, it says 235.95 euro. Um, I just went to their site and I was going to check out one of their throttles, and it ended up being something like 420 dollars US or something. Uh, if only these guys can get this stuff and sell it in the US, and um, you know, make it at least a little bit more affordable. It looks like great stuff, and I really want to get my hands on one of them throttles to replace my aging TWCS. But, um, yeah, until that price comes down, I don't know, man. It's just not something that's, you know, going to be on my radar anytime soon at those prices. But it looks like for, I don't know, what is this, like a 100 less than the throttle, you can get a button box. I don't know, man. I'd rather just buy the throttle at that rate, because if that's some 239 euro, 300 and some euro ended up 400 some dollars. So, yeah, that's a little bit expensive. But anyways, hey, they make great stuff from what I understand, and um, a lot of people love it. So I'll talk about it, you know, and I'll cover what they have going on. Um, but, yeah, so they have some button boxes that you can get. And it looks like some uh, new desk mounts to put all of your stuff together. And it looks like all of these things are coming out pretty soon from what it looks like. Mid-September, mid-September. So I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Here's a video that I happened upon that really impressed me and I thought it was pretty awesome. It's from a guy named Fireblaze. That dude is hauling ass. And as I watched this, man, I was kind of excited, man. This is kind of thrilling how fast this dude is just cruising through here. And I don't know where he's at on the Syria map, but notice all these cool, like, you know, busted up, war-torn buildings and stuff's on fire. I want that mission. That looks like that would be a lot of fun. Lower gear. Lower gear. 
So this video is about 15 minutes and 48 seconds long, and I'll tell you what, it's super fun. Like, this dude is a fantastic KA-58 pilot, and uh, I don't get too impressed by combat videos too often, you know what I mean? You do this stuff a lot, you day in, day out, shoot stuff, blow stuff up, I mean, it's what we do, right? But this guy's got some serious skill in the KA-50, and I really, really enjoyed this video. And I just wanted to highlight it because I, I do like to, you know, shine some light on people in the community uh, that, you know, help highlight flight sims in general for the cause. And uh, this guy just, you know, he deserves some, some views. Go subscribe to his channel. Leave a comment over there. Uh, hit the like button. It's definitely worth it. It's a fantastic video. So I'll throw this up there so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, that about covers it, man. Uh, as for me, I've uh, you know I've been kind of salivating over the new 3000 series cards, but I'm gonna sit back and wait. Uh, I'm curious to see what these things are going to perform like once they get into the hands of real DCS and flight simulator and IL-2 pilots that we know in the community and see what they have to say about these 3000 series cards because my biggest fear um, is that, you know, for the $700 mark, the 38 looks like a beautiful piece of equipment and I paid $700 for my 2080 Super just a year ago like this time. Um, and um, I have no regrets. I love my 2080 Super. I think it performs fantastic. I have an i9-9900K. What I have is considered a high-end system. But, man, that new card supposedly is double the performance of a 2080 Super. The misleading part is when they say double the performance. That is with DLSS and RTX enabled in most of the graphs that NVIDIA has been throwing around out there. So, I'm curious as to what kind of performance you would get in DCS, maybe at a higher resolution, you know, or at the same resolution that I'm playing now, because technically, outside of VR, I'm happy. I, I get fantastic performance. I get fantastic performance in all of the sims I play outside of VR, so there's really nothing to complain about, nothing that's pushing me to spend $700 on a new video card. Um, and it's not worth $700 for just... My fear is we're going to get to the point we're going to start seeing the real numbers. And I think this, you know, even though on paper this 3080 blows away a 2080 Ti, um, I don't know that it's, you know, going to really give us any kind of gains in VR and DCS and in other VR titles. Um, actually, the majority of the VR, VR titles I play outside of Flight Sims work perfectly fine without issue on my Rift S. It's just DCS is a pig. You know, IL-2 runs fantastic. Um, but I have a feeling that these cards might only give you 10 or 15 FPS more. And to me, $700 does not equal 10 or 15 FPS over what I'm getting right now, which isn't that great. But if it does give me 10 or 15 FPS and, and uh, it get, gets rid of the stutters and the pausing and all the nonsense, maybe... But then there's the talk of, you know, or, or then there's the issue that the visuals, you know, have to be toned down. If I'm able to crank it up and get performance gains, maybe that's worth it. I don't know. And then the, the whole unknown of the G2 that everybody thinks is going to be the savior. You know, the new reverb G2 that's coming out. Uh, I'm excited about it, too. But again, any of this stuff that has that kind of price tag, I'm going to sit back and watch what other people have to say first. Uh, being an early adopter is not always the wisest thing when it comes to technology. And again, my day job is an integrator, and I deal with all of the newest technology all the time when it comes to, like, you know, uh, audio-video equipment. And sometimes to buy the new thing when it first comes out is not the smartest move, you know. Some stuff comes out and it's just junk, and you've paid all this money for it, and you have to wait for them to come out with firmware and software and stuff to make things play nice. I mean, and in the PC world, it could be the same thing. You know, look at those cards from AMD, man. You know, there's still games that come out today that just aren't supported that well versus an NVIDIA card. You're ready to go. And this is why I've always stuck with NVIDIA. It's also why I've always stuck with Intel, to be honest, too, because I know what to expect. So that's about it, guys. Uh, I think the hardware front things are looking very promising for us again. But, you know, I just upgraded, like, to an i9 about six, seven months ago, and uh, 
video card about a year ago. Not quite sure that I'm ready yet, but you know, if I can get 4K visuals in a helmet mounted display and get 60 frames per second, that might be the thing to uh, push me in that direction. But again, it remains to be seen if that's what we're going to end up at. And uh, that's where I would love to see us. I would love to be able to jump in the Tomcat and, uh, you know, do VR and feel comfortable because it's beautiful. But again, I want to see these reviews. I want to see real world evidence that this stuff is going to, you know, do something for us. That's when I'll get really excited. Until now, it's promising. It really is. So, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit the like button. And until next time, guys.